they also agreed to do this interview long before season one ever came out. It was like, yeah. hi, I'm a stranger on the internet. That's, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> it's funny Cody interview. mentions that because he's like, yeah, this, this girl wants to come by and interview us about love. And I was like, well, I don't know if I love you right now. So then when I found out what this was, I was like, mom, I'm going to be on Oprah's network. <laughs> Look at the hot mess. Well, just saying. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome oh, you all out oh, to a musical extravaganza called The Night and Day Project. Is everybody excited to be here? Yeah. Okay. Okay, first of all, my view from here, all this melanin, everybody looks so good. Give yourselves a round of applause, please. Yeah. <laughs> so, Cody, my first question is for you. Um, how did you guys all meet as, as a group, as, a, as yeah. couples? Yeah. We had a baby in October of last year, of 2016. And uh, while I was up in the middle of the night often, I was mostly on social media, right? So I remember seeing this woman who had just had a baby doing like squats, going up the stairs in her apartment. And her husband was like recording it and it was like boo getting the thighs and the booty right. And I remember like kind of hating them a little bit because I was doing none of that. But our kids were born around the same time. And so I, I found them on social media. And I just started paying attention to their videos and um, just noticing not just the, the fun and the celebration of family and love from the two of them, but also the, the sort of, not, not following, but the sort of like real support and love that they had from the people who were paying attention to them. You know, And at that time, a year ago, we did our interview. You know, you guys had maybe a third of the following that you have now. And I was, just, I was just so interested in them, sort of with the similarities to where we were in our life. So I tracked them down um, on Facebook. We had a friend in common. And so I was like, can you introduce me? And so immediately, I mean, it was like a Tuesday. And I was like, hey, we'll be in New York on the, on the weekend. Yep. And we made it happen, or they made it happen. And so we, we came out and we interviewed them like that. Why did you guys decide to do it? To be honest, I man, I just... I love my wife. I do. I, I love my family. And it's like we don't see it. And when I spoke to Cody, y'all don't know Cody, but she, like, she has an infectious personality. And I just felt her spirit. And I was just like, man, she's just going to do something dope. And I wanted to be a part of it. And then I met Tommy. And I was like, yeah, this is going to be real dope. And... The biggest thing for us was just being able to tell our story. Like we just want to be able to tell our story, our way to leave our own legacy. Awesome, so. amazing. And they also agreed to do this interview long before season one ever came out. Nobody oh, wow. ever really so heard they, of Black Love. Oh, it was like, yeah. hi, I'm a stranger on the internet. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's the truth. <laughs> Can I come yeah. to your home? And it's shoot funny, an Cody mentions that because. Going into it, it was kind of like a random in between, like nursing our, my son one day, and I have my yeah. six year old, and I'm just, he's like, Yeah, this, this girl wants to come by and interview us about love. And I was like, Well, I don't know if I love you right now. Yeah. <laughs> because Go. I was just like, you know, Go. going through all the emotions postpartum. So I was like, You know, all right, I'll slap something together. So then when I found out what this was, <laughs> I was like, Mom, I'm gonna be on Oprah's network <laughs> looking a hot mess. I was like, What did I look good that day? I wasn't sure. So it was so funny because going into it, we had no idea the magnitude of the project and what it was going to be but we're just so so proud to be a part of it so thank you Cody and Tommy <laughs> so I actually want to find out from you both when you guys started dating in college right at Hofstra yeah yes okay did you all know each other before that yeah. can you tell us a little bit about that <laughs> I'm gonna let her tell her version first <laughs> oh okay uh, you can go ahead what do you mean my version? You gotta tell your version. Tell your version bad. So anyway, I'll tell y'all the truth about what happened. The truth, all right. We actually knew each other since elementary school days. Wow. So we went to a small Baptist uh, school out in Brownsville. I was in the third grade, he was in the second grade. So from back in the day, you know, at that age, you're not really paying too much of attention to, you know, guys and boys and girls. Everyone has cooties. You're not really into that stuff. However, our paths kept crossing over the years. So our sisters ended up going to the same school. He left 
around about third grade, so I hadn't seen him for a couple of years, right. but then I saw his sister coming back, and my sister and her are actually going to the same school, um, grades apart, and in passing, I would see him some days picking up his sister. Then I'd be in the mall some days, happened to walk past haagen -Dazs. I was like, wait a second, that's the bell. I, like, I, and at that time, I was so shy. My cousin used to always be like, girl, go buy some ice cream or something. Like, you know, go, go so he can notice you. And I'm like, nah, I'm sitting back in the cut. Then we ended up going to rival high schools. So he went to Madison High School. I was at Midwood. Uh, shout out, Midwood High School, anybody? All right. So I uh, went to Midwood, and we were pretty much also two. I would see him from a distance. I was a cheerleader. He was a football player. So I'd see him at the games and, and never say anything. Um, finally, <laughs> finally, fast forward to 2002, um, I am actually at a scholarship banquet from that school. So they had a foundation where they were giving out scholarships. I had just won a pageant that summer, so they asked me to co MC the event. So I was like, sure. So in the mail, I got the list of honorees, and I see his name on it. So I was like, ah, oh, let me get me a dress. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to shoot my shot, you know? <laughs> so I go to the event, and he's there. I see him in the distance, you know, strapping with his big head, 140 pounds, soaking wet. <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, he's actually here, you know? And uh, he's standing next to his brother. So I go up to him, and I'm like, Deval Ellis. And he was like, hey. So we ended up talking that night, you know, kicking it at the banquet in between my little set going on stage doing what I have to do. So the night is coming to an end, and I'm like, he didn't ask me for my number yet. Nope. So we're like getting ready to say goodbye, and it's like, is he not gonna ask me for my number? So I was like, you know what? Where's your program booklet? Found a pen, wrote my number in it, and I was like, you should use that someday. <laughs> <laughs> Reverse psychology, right? I should have known. So fast forward, a couple weeks passed. I was super busy that summer. I was traveling with the pageant, doing events and stuff. So I honestly didn't get a chance to meet up with him. He kept calling my house, wasn't getting me. So he thought I was just blowing him off. Wasn't happening. Right. I go, <laughs> about a month later now, I go to pick up my sister from school. And I see him picking up his sister. And I'm just like, oh my God, that's the Val. But that day I was on my way to get my hair done and my feet done. So I was looking busted. I was like, there's no way I go say hi to him today. But I see him and it kind of jogs my memory like, oh my God, Deval, I gotta find his number. Went home that evening, tried to find the program booklet with his number, couldn't find it. So I do remember that he said he lived in Canarsie. We both grew up a couple of blocks away from each other. So I was like, oh, great. So just so happens I was on my way driving to the Belt Parkway. I was like, just, just so happens. <laughs> Let me just swing down this block real quick and see if I see any familiar faces. <laughs> Gotta be determined sometimes. You huh? know? Tell him, Cody. Tell him. But it gets better. So I didn't see anybody familiar. And I'm just like, damn, how am I going to find this guy's number? So I went to the whitepages.com and I looked up his father's name. <laughs> and I was like, oh. Well. That's him. So I sat on that phone number for a couple of days because I was like, what do I look like calling this man's house? His parents are gonna probably be like, who is this girl? So I sat on the number for a few days and we in church as God would have it. A couple of days later, I get a phone call from my pageant director and she's like, hey Gideon, guess what? I have an event for you to go to on October 3rd. It's gonna be at Hofstra. And I was like, oh, I'm like, that's so cool. I applied to Hofstra. I'm actually waiting to hear back from them to see if I got accepted. And she's like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, yeah, can you make the event? And I was like, DeVal's at Hofstra. <laughs> I was like, yeah, girl, I'll be there. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> so that was the perfect opportunity now to use the number. I called his house. His mom answered the phone. Oh, my goodness, Kadeen, I remember you. Great. And um, she gave me his phone number. I called him up. I'm like, hey, handsome, I'm going to be at Hofstra in two days. <laughs> So we, we got together after the event. I was there for the leukemia okay, wait. lymphoma walk. Wait, you have to stop there. Okay. Because we have a clip. Oh, you have Which a actually, clip? you have just said some things that put this in a different context for me. Oh, no. But we have a clip. You was looking for a friend. I was looking for a friend. To start. Yo, 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 girls be friends. <laughs> I was 18. I, I was looking to smash. I saw her. She's bad. I was like, oh I smashed. Oh, my God, you're as, awful. And as soon as we were done, I called my cousin. I said, yo, I'm going to smash. <laughs> 
Exactly. You never what told happened. me that happened. That's exactly what happened. Did you really? I called. I called Brian. Oh. I said, Yo, you remember what That sounds like something <laughs> yeah, you would say. Yeah, I'm Smash. Oh, whatever. <laughs> well, I'm then, yeah, I had to wait. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hi. Uh huh. Yes. So. <laughs> So, that's so funny. I forgot you said that. Um, so yeah, I, I did the event that day, and we got we got together at Hofstra. He pulled up in his 19, what was it, 99 Maxima? 19, I was 89. 89 Maxima. <laughs> and um, we got together that evening, and the, the thing that really sealed the deal for me was going back to his room, not to smash, but we got food, went back to his room, and we literally sat and talked we for did. like three hours, nonstop, and it felt like an old friend reconnecting, catching up on where we've been all our lives, and literally, well, that's the date that we have as our anniversary, you right. know, October 3rd, 2002 is when we actually yeah. first met. But don't tell the girl he was sort of talking to because she might be mad about the date situation, so. <laughs> that ends my story. <laughs> Are you done now? So this is the thing I'm going to say, right? A woman that wants to find out something or get something is gonna get it. <laughs> Women could, if, if y'all really, really want to find the cure for cancer, tell a woman that her husband is cheating with the cure for cancer. <laughs> she gonna find the cure for cancer tomorrow, okay?